Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we are looking at the patch 14.5 notes. Now let's just think about it right from the beginning that we've come from 14.1. So this is quite a big jump in version number. Whether that means anything or not remains to be seen, but this is quite a packed patch full of different pieces of content and a few other things. So let's dive into it. First off, we have the first iteration of the seasons system, which is not really a big surprise because we know that they were working on this, but basically they say a seasons change implies the change in visual parts of the locations, ambient sound and weather effects. Early spring will be a available in this update which means snow will be gone unfortunately other seasons corresponding to the calendar seasons will be added in future updates which is really really cool i'm excited for this to come and for us to be you know changing through summer autumn winter whatever as we go through the year so this is really really nice now the first kind of spicy update is this added the btr to woods traveling between different stop points so if you're not a big streets player you may not have seen the btr so much but the btr is basically like an armored apc type thing and it drives around different maps and they've added it to woods which is not something that anybody was really expecting and this is going to go between a few different points scab bunker sunken village old sawmill sawmill usec checkpoint emicon base junction and they've added a detailed suspension system to the BTR for more realistic rough terrain movement because as it appears on woods, it's not always going to be on roads specifically. Now I was having a little look at the map to try and figure out where it might go. And they've said here that they've opened the gates at Northern and Southern UN roadblock to allow the BTR to drive outside the location but these exits are under sniper fire. So I originally thought that it was going to move in and out of the map through these two locations. But I think what it's going to do is actually going to drive from one to the other outside of the map. So it doesn't have to cross like loads of rocky terrain or something. So if we have a quick look at the map, Scab Bunker is where it's going to start at least. Well, that's the first location that they've talked about, which is up here. And then Sunken Village, which is down there. And the next one, we've got Old Sawmill and Sawmill. So from here, it's probably going to drive down the road, go down into this section, which is Old Sawmill down here, and then into Sawmill. I mean, I don't know whether this is in the right order, but it's going to get to Sawmill some way. Maybe it'll turn around and go back. Who knows? Then after that, it says USEC Checkpoint. This is the one that I'm a little bit confused about. I'm not 100% sure what this means. Given that they've said Northern and Southern UED Roadblock down here, I presume USEC Checkpoint must be something different, and I'm guessing it's the USEC Camp. But I don't know, because everyone just calls it USEC camp rather than rather than USEC checkpoint, so I'm not sure. Emicon base is this one down here, the medical base down there that was added relatively recently in Woods history. And then we've got junction, which could really be anything. This probably means this one, could be this one, it could be even a junction down here. So it's kind of hard to say. But anyway, the BTR is going to be roaming around the map. And presumably, when it gets to Northern Ewan Roadblock, it's actually going to go outside the map here, down behind the old railway, and then back in the map here, down at Ewan Roadblock, which is pretty cool. So we're looking forward to having that BTR on Woods, which would be awesome. Be able to stash loot in it mid-session, which I've been doing a lot on the streets, which is super fun. Allows Woods to be even more of a loot map than it is already, because you'll be able to put some loot into the BTR and then carry on with your raid, which is awesome. Moving on, we've got some updates for Ground Zero. I've been looking forward to this one because at the moment, if you are above level 20, then you just can't play the map. So right now, it says the system is going to divide players into beginners up to level 20 inclusive. Now, this is a bit weird because I thought that they were going up to level 15 and then 16 and above, but apparently they've kept it level 20 for some reason. I still think this is a mistake, but whatever and experienced players level 21 and above and so the matchmaking for these groups are separate. So if you're level one, you will only be matched on Ground Zero up to players at level 20. The fact that you have the flea market for five levels here is the reason why I think this is a mistake. And if you're above level 21 or yeah, 21 and above, then you will be match made with everybody from 21 to, you know, level 100 like you know, or any level above that. The Grand Zero will be available to all players without level restrictions, as in you will be able to play the map even if you are higher level. For experienced players, there's a modified version of Ground Zero, so scavs are actually more difficult. I don't know whether this means that they are the same as normal or whether they're harder than the regular map. It sounds like harder than the regular map. Chance to find rare loot, the possibility of an airdrop appearing, which is cool, and you can call it in with a red flare, and the possibility of Colantite appearing on Ground Zero, which is quite fun. I think that's a cool thing. If you're looking for Colantite, you don't necessarily have to play Streets anymore. Now, they've done a really good thing here. Say you've got a mixed group of different levels, say some at level 15 and some at level 30. If there is at least one player in the group with a level higher than 20, all players will receive a warning for selecting Ground Zero for experienced players. So it puts everybody into the higher tier, which is good, right? It doesn't just like block you from doing it as a party. This is the right solution for this, I'm pretty sure. When playing a scav, the matching is independent of the player's level, which I'm reading as you're always going to be in the low tier version of Ground Zero when you're playing as scav, I think. 
but I guess that remains to be seen. Scavs do also have a level as well, but it sounds like that's not going to be used. So we'll see. But I think that means it's going to work as it does now, which is that it puts you in the low level of ground zero or in with the beginners. In co-op practice mode, access to ground zero is also independent of the player's level. Okay. And then you've got a bunch of stuff. The first in line, shooting cans, luxurious life. These are all the ground zero specific quests. They no longer fail after the player reaches level 20, obviously, because you can go back to ground zero after level 20 and go and complete them. Now, this is quite interesting. Added ground zero objectives for the following quests. A shooter board in heaven. And now you've got to get five bolty headshots on ground zero as well. The guide, so you have to survive that map too. Peacekeeping mission, survivalist path, eagle, owl, escort, slaughterhouse, and information source. They've added a few others. Adding another shooter board in heaven map is definitely not going to entice me into completing that quest, but, but there you go. And we've added daily and weekly tasks for Ground Zero as well. I'm excited to get my teeth stuck back into Ground Zero because I haven't played it since basically the first two weeks of the wipe. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. A couple of sound updates. Updated the ambient sound to match the current season in game. We did see in the snow, it does seem that the ambient is maybe not quite as strong as it was before. Wind volume now depends on its strength in raid, which is cool. So I don't know whether this is going to make it worse or not. I don't know what the wind volume is currently. Is it medium? Like oh, it's sometimes going to be better or worse? Is it always going to be worse or is it always going to be better? I'm not sure exactly where that falls on the scale. Scale. Updated the indoor rain ambient, smoother transitions between day and night ambient, smoother transitions between indoor and outdoor ambient. That will be interesting to see. So when you go from outside into, you know, through a doorway or something and it suddenly snaps to that indoor sound, you have to see if that's a little bit smoother now. Improved the audibility through door and window openings, so some adjustments to the Oculus audio system, and added the external sound suppression while inside the BTR. Not really that important on that one. Now in the UI, we actually have some really nice quality of life stuff here. Added the damage and penetration stats to the ammo inspector screen. We've been asking for this for ages because it's now in Arena, and with the proliferation of the wiki and the fact that everybody uses it, there's really no need to not have it in game. It only is at the detriment of new players not to have this stuff in there. But this second section is actually maybe even more interesting. When hovering over the penetration stat, you can see the penetration chance against certain armor classes. Is this going to be in there just as a percentage or is it going to be high chance, medium chance, low chance? I reckon that's probably more likely the case, but it's good to see that they're putting those things in there so you can actually tell what it means. For a new player, putting 40 pen also doesn't really mean anything. So this is a nice touch. If they're going to do this, they may as well do this as well. Some really nice changes to the skills menu, added descriptions to the skill leveling methods. So I guess making it a little bit more realistic as to what you actually have to do, because at the moment it doesn't really tell you. Numerical values of the bonuses are now displayed in tenths, added a green skill bar displaying how many skill points you've gained during the raid, which is quite nice. So you could see exactly like what you got in what skills, which is fun. Added the ability to view a player's profile via their dog tag and on the lobby screen and the ability to report a player on their profile page. I think this is huge. This is really important because there's lots of players that you see around and you're just not able to report them and you can see they've got like crazy KDs or whatever. So this will at least give people an option to report via the profile page rather than literally just at the end of the raid when you get killed. Added a button for the dog tag bonuses information in the Hall of Fame so you can see exactly what they do. So other changes. Optimize the algorithm of searching for cover for AI. Okay. Change the lighting inside Ultramall and Interchange. I really hope it changes back to the way that people liked it maybe a couple of months ago. I don't know exactly what they're going to do here. It always makes me slightly concerned when they change some of the lighting and whatever, but it can't, probably can't really be any worse than it is now. So let's just hope that it's good. Added a sound signal before the BTR departs from its stop point and improved some hit rage when the player tilts in quick succession. Okay. Now we've got a couple of fixes here, which are some interesting, like this one fixed geometry and settings for locations aimed at a more accurate operation of vaulting and climbing and added the ability to vault from previously unblocked positions. For example, the windows of the health resorts. So you can now vault in and out the windows of health resort, which is awesome. We're gonna have to see exactly which ones that works on, whether it only works from the inside, whether you could do it from the outside. The one that I'm most interested in is whether you can get out of the east wing window, the very, very far one on the ground floor, because that would be amazing. You'd have like so many more ways in and out of that building, or at least out if you can't, can't get in. And we'll have to see whether that's the case. Fix some AI behavior using stationary weapons. Don't really know what was wrong there. Fix the damage calculation algorithm for limb penetration. So before this patch, limbs were basically completely impenetrable, even when blacked and acted as like some crazy armor. Something has changed, so we're probably gonna have to go and test that to see what it is, but, but this might make the arm armors a little bit more important. Again, lots of people not really using the Osprey and things like that at the moment, simply because your arms are just huge level 10 armor anyway at the moment. So changing this algorithm might have some impact on the gameplay and things that we pick. Fix the inability to pick up loot at the Terracot Business Center. Fix the significant FPS drop in offline raids after changing the vaulting over medium obstacles to auto. It's interesting they said to offline raids. Yeah, it doesn't have as much impact in online. I did make a video about this one and it was mostly in offline the issue. Fix the lack of damage registration after ricochet in certain cases. Painkillers using MVGs has been fixed. Fix the inability to view a player's profile when using the flea market. Incorrect damage to a player when walking into a non-moving BTR. 
and they've returned the display of ricochet chance info for helmets so at the moment or at least before this patch you couldn't see the ricochet chance for helmets because it was like embedded within the soft armors on the helmet and because you couldn't click into them because they're inbuilt pieces you couldn't see it anymore which is unfortunate so they've added those ricochet chances back like we used to be able to see them previously and finally the last one fix the incorrect camera tilt if the player was leaning while aimed shooting so there you have it I think this is an interesting one. I wasn't expecting kind of content to come. So, you know, we've got things like the BTR and uh, some really nice, like, quality of life stuff that's come here. So this is, like, really cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have to see. I mean, there's still some stuff that people want to see. Things like um, trying to get rid of the audio pop bug. But I presume BSG is still working on that because that would be really, really important. But anyway, it's, it's nice to see a decent update like this. We're going to have to get into game to test out some of these things. There's always some hidden changes usually that we don't see in the patch notes themselves. But otherwise, I'm excited about this. But we're going to have to go and test it out. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.